Uh, yeah, good day. Now, I don't know whether you're aware of this fact, but over what was for many people the traditional festive tide of Yule, I was working in the manner made famous by the tireless husky of the North. And as a result of all this assiduous travail, I was pleased to announce during the year the publication of my book. Now, I plan to just encapsulate a few key sections of it for you now, the better that you might understand the real events of November the 11th, 1975, and their causes and consequences. Firstly, though, I'd like to just avail you of my thoughts and feelings about the project as a whole, and thus to give you an idea of my overall approach. Now, my book, The Truth of the Pudding, was, of course, a response to the book Money for Judgment, written by the ageing and infirm lunatic ex-plenipotentiary, whose rambling and fatuous hallucinations were also published during the period. Now, I'd like to point out, firstly, that the drivelling old half-wit made enough factual errors in his boring and witless tome to render very dubious indeed any claim he made to have had even the faintest inkling of what was going on at the time. For instance, he writes, if that's not an overstatement, that at one stage I crossed the room and opened the Luxaflex Twinitis while holding a small porcelain figurine in my left hand and whistling to Ken John Peel. Now I happen to know very well that at the time I was enjoying the hospitality of the satrap of Whack with whom I spent a very pleasant and fruitful day's badinage on a full state visit I made to his once great nation. And I know this because I have a book in which I have habitually written all my flight details and to which I can refer with absolute fidelity at all times. On another occasion, the simpering old clown remembers a conversation we apparently had about supply in a car in Canberra when my book tells me I was in Europe and he was in South America. So factually, his memory is far from accurate. Now one thing, of course, I had to think about was what to include in my book and what to leave out. And this is a decision that is not always easy to make. Obviously, if I had included everything, then uh, we would have had a very thick book indeed. And very thick books indeed were not really what this exercise was all about. We needed a thorough but not over-detailed explanation of what happened around about the time the balloon went up and the hoodlums took over running the shop. So there were obviously certain things uh, that there simply was not going to be room for. And there were other matters, of course, that although helpful on paper, might have tended to cloud the issue on paper. Should I, for instance, mention the fact that the ex-Viceroy wore a second-hand truss which from time to time would secede slightly and plummet down inside the higher dress flannels and out onto the floor of the Deputy Palace, on occasion still containing the articles vouchsafed to it in its rather more northerly position? Should it be recorded that the feeble-minded old lout used to dress up as a rabbit and terrorise people in the suburbs by digging burrows on their lawns? Should I reveal that for several years he was thought by many people to have been the Canberra bicycle seat sniffer? or that he broke wind so readily that many of his speeches were punctuated with the actual audible sound of the colon. Obviously, I had a lot of thinking to do about this, and ultimately I decided not to make any mention of these things at all, because they're fundamentally irrelevant. It is not my purpose to make the silly old buzzard look any more ridiculous than he already is, and by confining myself to a discussion of the real heart of the business, I could better inform the public of the events as they actually happened. These other aspects of his ludicrous character can best be left to those prepared to involve themselves in scurrilous name-calling and a fair amount of whimsical character assassination. For myself, though, I just left it alone and got on with the book, which actually sold very nicely, thank you. Copyrights are F. Dag, The Truth of the Pudding, published by Printer Dag Publications. Good evening.